In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Nectarius of Pentapolis. He is a, one of my personally favorite saints. Um, on the new calendar, his uh, feast day it falls on my birthday. And uh, so when we were on the new calendar, I used to rejoice in the fact that I had that kind of connection with him. But then we moved to the old calendar, which is great. But I still give thanks to God that somewhere in the world there are people who are celebrating St. Nectarius Day on my birthday. <laughs> I had a, the great opportunity many years ago, I believe it was in 1989, I, I think, of going to Marathos. And while I was in Athens, I went into the shop of an iconographer and I purchased this icon of St. Nectarius. It's the one that we have in the center of the church. Because I'm a monk, I, I purchased an icon of him in his simple monastic garb rather than his uh, bishop's vestments. And then, a few days later, my friend Father Basil Rhodes and I went to the island of Aegina uh, to venerate the holy relics of St. Nectarius. And while we were there, in the, where the convent is, where he had served as spiritual father uh, to the nuns, and this was when they were building the large uh, Catholicon that you can see off in the distance from there, uh, it wasn't finished yet, so I didn't get to see it, although I understand it is now the largest Orthodox uh, church in all of Greece. While we were there venerating his relics, Father Basil heard that uh, they were about to do a service to St. Nectarius in this chapel. Uh, off to the left in the chapel, to the left of the Iconostasis, there was a a bishop's mitre, and inside the bishop's mitre was the holy skull of the saint. And Father Basil said they are passing around a plate and you can put on a prayer request and it will be set under his relics. And I said, oh, I don't know what to pray because it's caught me off guard. And he said, well, pray for uh, the end of your dyslexia. And I said, how do you spell dyslexia? And Father Basil said, don't worry, he'll know. <laughs> so I tried to phonetically spell dyslexia. And uh, they did the service. And I kid you not, I walked out of that shrine having been cured of dyslexia. My dyslexia was so bad, in fact, that if it hadn't been for high school declamation and drama and debate, I probably wouldn't have even been able to go to college because I learned how to deal with my dyslexia. But the one problem I had with it in those early days before I was a priest was that if I was the least bit tired or the least bit nervous, my dyslexia would roar in with a vengeance and I would mispronounce words. I remember once during the service when I was doing uh, the, the can, the, uh, I was serving as cantor, and I, I prayed for our transmissions rather than our transgressions. So it was a pretty serious thing, and the chances of my ever being ordained because of that were slim. But then, obviously, St. Nectarius interceded before the throne of God and was cured. I want to say this about St. Nectarius that first tugged at my heart. St. Nectarius was known as a great preacher, and he was much beloved throughout Greece. And being the fallen nature that we bring into the church, there were many high-ranking bishops that were jealous of him. And so there was an accusation made against him. 
uh, a moral accusation against him. And he was immediately removed as his, uh, from his see. And he was sent essentially into exile. That's when he went to the island of Agina. And the nuns took him in because he was their spiritual father and they loved him. And uh, later in his life, when he was being admitted to a hospital in Surrey's condition, and he was wearing a tattered cassock, and, and uh, it was unbelievable to the medical staff that this was a metropolitan in front of them, that they, that they looked at his attire and they could hardly believe it. But this man, who had been much like St. John Chrysostom, who had been sent into exile because of jealousy, this is a man who stood his ground in the faith, and he didn't waver. And ultimately, he was declared a saint, and he's probably the most beloved saint in Greece, and one of the most beloved saints throughout the Orthodox world. He's certainly one of my favorites. I love him. I. I ask for his intercession regularly. And he is a symbol to all of us of why, no matter what happens, no matter what visits us that may be unpleasant, that we stay the course in our faith in Christ. Because ultimately, principalities and powers of darkness will not prevail against us because we have Christ with us and in us. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us.